Reporting for duty, sir. It has been approximately one month and three days since the war began. The Imperial Guards and Black Templars Company Detachment were the first to make planet fall and quickly set about establishing a field command atop the now battered fortress. It was not long before the orcs arrived, their ships and rocks presumably trailing after the Imperial fleet. The works took even less time than the Imperial forces in building their bases and forward positions against the fortress. The orc assaults were weathered easily enough by the entrenched heavy weapons teams, artillery batteries and turrets positioned across the entirety of the fortress. The defenses made short work of the Zeno's armor, although the tech priests were never afforded even a moment of lull as constant constructions and repairs were being made. Captain Basilus of the Black Templars had led many strike teams into orc territory to menace supply lines, destroy energy production facilities and eliminate key personnel. Two weeks into the war, the Black Templars had collected over a dozen severed heads of orc knobs, much to the satisfaction and delight of the Imperial Guards. After the second week and with the orcs on the verge of defeat, the skies began to darken and churn deep crimson and purple above. The heretics powered out of innumerable portals onto the landscape. The Necrons, as mysterious as they are deadly, rose up from the ground in a mirage. The vile mechanical Necron fiends seemed without number, as did the orcs and chaos demons and traitors. For weeks the Black Templars and their Imperial Guard allies had been fighting hard to repel the near-constant assaults on the fortress. Then. On the second day after a month had elapsed, Captain Basilus had received reports of Elda activity in the area. The Elda at least seemed to have no interest in direct warfare so far, preferring fast strikes and stealth operations to a war of attrition. In a way, the Elda strategy was a benefit to the fortress's occupants but in another, it was a serious detriment. Precise strikes on critical locations accomplished before either the Space Marines or Guardsmen could react had set the Imperial war effort back severely, and day by day the lines were faltering and morale was beginning to waver. The once unshakable resolve of the... 101st was now showing signs of weakness and doubt. Only faith was maintained where other things failed. The priests from the 101st Vendelands clergy administered times of prayer, confession and veneration of the fallen no matter the circumstance. Such services took priority even in the midst of battle. The Space Marines and Imperial Guard had come to understand that remaining confined within the fortress would be their doom. Eventually, the enemy would break through the gates. It was not a question of if, but when. That very question had weighed heavy on Captain Basil's mind constantly. That the battle lines would be overwhelmed was certain. It was how to turn a battle lost into a war won. Prologue story written by brother Ericus. The links to his web pages can be found in the video description. The full version of the prologue will be available in the pinned comment. Make sure to check it out. And now back to our battle. The Imperial Guard and uh, the Space Marines 
continue to build their bases. The big war lies ahead. It was uncertain whether um, the Imperial Guard had been affected by the ancient uh, Necron magic here or if they were actually worshipping uh, the Void Dragon, the Katan God as they seem to have the Necron badges and banners applied to the buildings and uh, infantry as well as the vehicles. Staying inside the fortress is not an option. The fortress has been assaulted for uh, well over a month now. So both the Black Templars and the 101st Vandal and uh, have to work on a strategy on how to get out of the fortress and fight the enemies. The Orcs, Chaos, Necrons and Eldar basically forged an alliance or at least a ceasefire. They have to eliminate the Imperial threat. The servants of the Emperor are uh, advancing slowly ahead, taking control of the strategic points. But can they hold these positions? Taking a strategic point can be easy, but holding it will be definitely challenging. The Black Templars in here built up a bunch of turrets, much needed uh, defensive positions inside the fortress at the gates. So far the enemy attack is not very well organized. A bit of a back and forth here at the gates, they are pretty undecided. The orcs are leading the way, basically. Serving as the cannon father here at the entrance. Mountains of orcs have already been killed in the area. The Yelda is showing up with Wraith Lords and Farseer's Eldritch Storm trying to breach the defenses. Chaos Defiler is approaching. A big threat for uh, Guardsmen. They lose morale by even looking at that creature, let alone being damaged by it. Five Tempests have been produced by uh, the Black Templars here serving as a defensive uh, wall basically in the air, highly mobile, they can uh, move from here if needed and defend uh, the walls of the fortress. The gates have been already severely damaged. And the enemies can easily enter the fortress. The Imperial Guard and Space Marines will have to fight hard for a long time.
to defend the fortress. Make sure it does not get overwhelmed and filled with uh, heretics and xenos. So far so good, the defenses work pretty well. The points are getting occupied now by the enemy forces. The Necron Lord is here with a resurrection orb. He will resurrect the fallen uh, metal from the ground. Three basilisks have been produced by the Imperial forces. As good as Imperium can get on the artillery, the Imperial Guard has to make sure they make good use of that. All the artillery units and heavy weapons teams well positioned here on the walls will serve as very good defensive lines. There goes the first uh, heavy weapon team. Even holding the points inside the fortress at the top of the walls is nearly impossible at this point as the fortress is being constantly assaulted by the enemy. The narrow path at the entrance of the fortress serves as a very good uh, advantage to Imperial forces, both Imperial Guard and Space Marines. It makes their life a lot more easier to defend. The enemies can't just easily march all at once inside the fortress, they have to go in one after the other with well-coordinated attacks. A strafing run has been cast by the general at the entrance, making sure that the enemy infantry does not pass so easily through the gates. A ceasefire agreement basically between the enemy forces. It is not clear whether they are allies or uh, they just have a ceasefire agreement. So far their attacks seem uh, quite messed up, not well uh, coordinated. The works once again trying to build up their uh, bases against uh, the fortress's walls. Can they manage though? More and more heavy weapons teams and artillery is being positioned on the walls. And the defensive lines now is formed from both air vehicles, the Tempests, as well as infantry, well positioned in the middle of the passageway through into uh, the Imperial Fortress. Three basilisks still up, 
and they will be staying in there well positioned inside the fortress now using the Earthshake uh, abilities casting them onto the enemy the infantry and vehicles dealing insane amounts of damage making sure the gates will be defended The enemies shall not overwhelm them today. The strategic points on the walls of the fortress, the outer ones closer to the gate, are still impossible to build up with uh, listening posts. As soon as the tech priests are uh, placing uh, the listening post, starting to build it up, it gets uh, easily destroyed seconds after. Impossible to build them now on either side. The assassin is also here now. Focusing that avatar heavily with his uh, specialized shots. A perfect anti-demon unit. Sitting right here. Behind the Black Tempers. The avatar will fall. More and more earth, earth uh, shakes uh, from the basilisks are being cast here in the middle. The enemy is stuck at the gates. The Bane Blade and the Lemon Rats battle tanks hitting the lands inside the fortress, they are out and ready to fight. Due to the massive sizes however of the Bane Blade, he cannot get out and uh, move forward. He cannot get out outside the fortress, so both Space Marines and Imperial Guard will have to work on a strategy and uh, think on how they uh, will build a forward base outside the fortress's walls. Without that, the war cannot be won. For now, the Bane Blade and the Lemon Rust battle tanks will simply sit behind the infantry lines and defend. Thanks to their long range of fire, they can uh, deal the damage, reach the enemies and fight them back. Multiple orbital bombardments, strafing runs and earth shakes have already hit the battlegrounds here at uh, the entrance into the fortress the enemies shall not pass a squigath is here at the gates the massive creature struggling a bit to get inside well, there's an assassin waiting for this uh, demon also, infiltrated nicely in there, as well as the Bane Blade, Dreadnoughts, and Lemon Rust battle tanks ready to fight it. 
a squig of a lone posing no threat to the Imperial forces at this point. The Orc Fortress is up and they start building up uh, war banners at the gates. So far so good, their plan seems to be working out fine. In the meantime, the Black Templars are leading a uh, deep strike operation now into the work territory. While the Imperial Guard will be sitting inside the fortress and defend the entry. The Assault Terminator squad in here in the enemy territory will struggle and get killed by the bunch of uh, work buildings which can shoot and deal damage. One Terminator squad alone in there will not do much. Looted tanks at the gates. The orcs have managed to steal the Imperial Guard uh, Lemon Ras tanks in the first weeks when the war began. While the Imperial Guard and the well positioned artillery forces are defending the fortress, the Black Templars will lead deep strike operations into the enemy territory, now hitting the heretic's base, that also forces the orcs and uh, chaos to bring their uh, infantry back home. The Black Templars in here are getting overwhelmed in the northwest on the wildlands, far away from their home, far away from the fortress. Can they deal the damage in here? Can they win the day? Can they take down at least one enemy base? That would mean a lot for the Imperial forces a massive step ahead towards winning the war. Fear some Black Templars getting most of the enemy forces back from our gates. Far away from the fortress now, a bunch of heretics and orcs hunting the Black Templars on the wildlands. During this time, the Imperial Guard forces will have to defend the gates still. The Elder and Necrons are still trying to attack and breach through the defenses. A bunch of turrets in here in the middle have been destroyed. The Bane Blade, Land Raiders, Lemon Rust Battle Tanks and Predators, however, should be able to defend from the Necrons and Elder. well-positioned 
behind the fortress uh, walls. Time for the dreadnoughts to deploy here into the elder base now. The strike operations will continue. into the enemy territory. Winning the day here is not the objective. These deep strike operations also win a lot of time for uh, the Imperial Guard as well as the Space Marines to build up bigger bases and perhaps get out of the fortress slowly while the enemies are driven back in the depths of their bases maybe then the imperial guard and the space marines will manage to get out no way they have not even managed to take down the orc settlement yet which stays uh, positioned right behind uh, the fortress a squad of scouts infiltrated Accompanied by a skull probe also, they do have the detection, are sitting in the back of the map. So uh, the Black Templars can deploy in here, can deep strike in there as long as they have vision on uh, the enemy territory. The army, however, has been uh, mostly killed there on uh, the enemy territory. Black Templars have to replenish their forces be before they can go on another deep strike operation. And this is exactly what will happen. One more skull probe has been uh, deployed for now, getting closer to the Elder base. We also gather information in here that the Necrons have managed to get up a restored monolith, which is about to approach the fortress. Yet another strafing run and multiple Earthshakes have to be cast in here into the enemy forces at the gates. As soon as the bunch of the Black Templars have been killed in the wild, uh, wildlands, the enemies almost managed to breach. Very few defenses left for uh, Imperial Guard and Space Marines in here. The Land Reader is about to get destroyed by the Avatar. 
multiple heavy weapons teams have been obliterated. The Bane Blade, however, remains unscratched. The Assassin remains hidden behind the fortress's walls and can slowly but surely take down the enemy demons. The Yelda with their psychic powers smell something in here, they know the enemies are uh, somewhere close. Heavy weapons on the field. Black Templars realizing that the Imperial Guard cannot defend uh, the entrance by themselves decided to drop a few dreadnoughts in here, which will fall shortly to the devastating firepower of the enemy forces. Multiple destroyers here from Necrons, Hell Talons, which can take down uh, vehicles and even poison infantry. So far the enemy does not seem to be in an interwin alliance, it's just a ceasefire agreement between them. Apparently the Chaos forces uh, have managed to poison the orcs as well as the Necrons and Eldar in here. They will not have an alliance with the Greenskins, Necrons and sneaky Eldar today. But before they can fight each other, there's a more serious threat hidden in the fortress which have, has to be taken down. They cannot even begin to think of fighting each other at this point. First they will have to deal with the Imperials and the Emperor's finest. The orc Big Mac manages to jump with a squad of uh, storm boys over the walls inside the fortress and take down uh, multiple heavy weapon uh, teams entrenched here in between the fortress's walls. The Black Templars know where to be seen inside the fortress, they are leading another deep strike operation into the enemy territory. There goes a Dreadnought, marches towards the Chaos base. Multiple dreadnoughts being deployed into the work city now, as well as uh, infantry will follow. But will they succeed and take down the plethora of uh, war banners in here? They do also deal insane damage to all the Black Templars. The Librarian casting the Word of the Emperor ability will keep uh, the Space Marines alive it's only a matter of time until uh, these marines will fall they are being overwhelmed by both uh, enemy infantry vehicles as well as war banners here in the orc uh, territory they will have to teleport away from here Perhaps attacking the Chaos base would uh, be a wiser choice. And I believe an assault on the Chaos base uh, is about to happen next. Once again this deep strike leads uh, back home most of uh, the heretics and greenskins 
drove them back from um, the fortress gates. The Yelda, however, will not even uh, bother going into the Orc and uh, Heretic territory to help them. The heavy weapons teams are recovered, once again positioned expertly inside um, the fortress's walls, making sure the enemy infantry will not pass through. The B Black Templars will continue the deep strike uh, mission now into uh, the Chaos base. More space marines will land in here. And the heretics, most of their forces were uh, driven back home. They have to defend their base. An orbital bombardment cast into uh, the Chaos Stronghold. It will not be taken down, however. Only a skull probe left of the Black Templars here in uh, the enemy territory. The heretics can smell it somewhere close. They cannot detect it just yet. The probe has been revealed now and will be destroyed by the Chaos Demons. In the meantime, at the gates the war continues to rage on. No rest for the tech priests today. They will be busy repairing, building and dying today. The Imperial Guard feeling fine, defending the fortress, while the Black Templars keep uh, trying. Assaulting the enemy bases, more and more Dreadnoughts and Space Marines will be deployed now again into the Elda base. Even a Necron Monolith nearby. Now the Necrons and the Yelda will have to get back in here finally from the fortress and defend.
a heavily upgraded monolith getting destroyed. Even the avatar of Cain is here to fight the Black Templars. And heavy destroyers will make short work of their dreadnoughts. And once again most of the Black Templars are getting slaughtered here in the enemy territory. It's only a matter of time until they will die in the name of the Emperor. In the meantime, at the gates, the orcs are growing in number. They brought another squigath here. Looted tanks, knobs, and commanders. Getting prepared for the next uh, assault on uh, the fortress. The Black Templars are not done with the assaults, they will continue to deal the damage to both Elda, Necrons and now Chaos again will follow. Small in numbers, the Black Templars today will die faster. Than being trained. Once again, the Chaos base is under the assault by multiple uh, dreadnoughts, even Grey Knights deployed in here in case demons will show up the grey knights would be the perfect tool to deal with the demons in uh, the area as well as the assault terminators Doing economy damage, base damage to the heretics. Will drive the Space Marines and Imperial Guard a step closer towards uh, the victory. It is not necessary to take down uh, one enemy base entirely, not necessary to annihilate a in the enemy faction entirely. At least doing some economic damage in here will uh, suffice. Economic damage, base damage, 
and driving back the bunch of uh, heretics and the green skins from the fortress gates. Back and forth, from left to right, the Black Templars will not stop their assaults. They took down over half of the heretic base in the northwest. And will now continue to do so into the Elder base. Seven heavy weapon uh, teams positioned once again on the walls of the fortress. Making sure they will reach the enemy which approaches the area. The orc stronghold has been destroyed in the meantime by the three heavy weapons teams on the left uh, side of the wall. The Bane Blade is too huge, it cannot get out of the fortress. The Imperial Guard as well as the Black Templars will have to work on uh, building up forward bases outside the fortress walls if they want to get the massive vehicles out of the fortress. Most of the enemy forces were drove back to their bases by uh, the Black Templar's uh, genius uh, deep strike operations. A moment of relief for the Imperial Guard defending uh, the fortress. It will not take long, however, until the bunch of the enemy forces will hit the gates once again and try to enter the fortress here. Most of the Black Templars in enemy lanes have been obliterated once again and it will take time for them to recover. Hundreds of Black Templars wounded. The Apothecary is hard at work.
The first attempt from the Imperial Guard now to build outside the fortress gates, outside the walls, a mechanized command has been placed. A tech priest in there, however, would not be able to get. And so the Black Templars decided to aid the Imperial Guard deep striking a servitor and uh, helping them to build the vehicle production facility. That, however, will not be enough to get a Bane Blade out. They will have to build the Mars Pattern Command, as well as a Field Command, preferably, and uh, forward the bases closer to the enemy territory. Having production buildings closer to the enemy bases would uh, be a massive step ahead to winning the war. Accomplishing that, however, will not be easy. The enemies keep attacking the fortress in huge numbers at the gates still, getting slaughtered by uh, the massive artillery firepower, the basilisk's earthshakes being cast non-stop into the orc chaos forces. While the Black Templars once again hard at work into the enemy lands, trying to distract them, drive them back home from the fortress gates. Multiple attempts have been made already. Another squig that falls, most likely taken down by the Bane Blade and the Assassin, which sits right here. Most of the Black Templars into the enemy territory, busy dying and taking down slowly the enemy bases, as well as dry droving uh, the enemy forces back home, allowing Imperial Guards to slowly prepare and build outside the fortress walls. A bunch of recovered uh, Black Templars in here, the Apothecary is uh, worked hard to bring them back, they cannot die in uh, big numbers. The Elder as well as the Chaos Forces back into their territory now, far away from the fortress. The 
Space Marines will fight bravely in here. Won't even try to retreat. Nowhere to run. The home is too far away. The Imperial Guard elite units still up and running, shooting non-stop at the enemy forces. Most of them are killed here at the gates. The Mars Pattern Command has been uh, finished outside the fortress walls now. Time to produce that Bane Blade and uh, try to approach the enemy bases slowly with more powerful units. Staying inside the fortress would not win the war. Space Marines and Imperial Guard will have to get out eventually. The Necrons decided to guard uh, their territory with the restored monolith. They will not send it in uh, to attack just yet. It will be used to defend the base. The Heretics and the Elder will also uh, help the Necrons now. It feels like... Uh, once uh, the Black Templar started to attack, to deep strike into the enemy territory, the enemy decided to ally and help themselves. After days of trying to penetrate the walls and failing, they will need an alliance if they want to take the Imperials down. Finally, a Bane Blade now uh, lurking outside the fortress walls. The enemies realizing that it is a huge threat will now march towards it, trying to take it down. The Black Templar seeing that uh, the Imperial Guard succeed with the base build up outside the walls, decide to help them and drop a bunch of turrets in here build them up, make sure that uh, the Imperial Guard base is well defended. Defending it would mean a lot for both Space Marines and Imperial Guard. A step closer to enemy territory. is a step closer in winning the war. The orbital bombardment hits the ground now within the fortress. The more coordinated attack right now from the enemy forces forced that uh, force uh, commander to call for an orbital bombardment right inside the fortress at the entrance.
A few Black Templars still lurking in the wildlands far away from uh, the fortress, distracting the enemies and keeping them back home. The field command is up and running here outside the fortress walls, as well as a mechanized command and a Mars pattern command. The tech priests hard at work repairing the machine of doom, which has been killing now non-stop hundreds of uh, foes, flanking from uh, the right hand side into the enemy forces. The Bane Blade on the right side of the fortress, keeping the enemies a bit further away from the walls. The Land Raider and the Predators on the other side inside the fortress, making sure the enemies will not pass into the main bases. The Necron Lord keeps resurrecting the uh, dead metal from the ground. Fortunately for uh, the Imperium, not many Necrons have died around in here. Not many of them can be revived at once. The Bane Blade now under heavy attack by the Avatar and Fire Prisms. Only a matter of time until it will fall. And there he goes down. And as soon as it falls, it's only a matter of time until the base falls here. In the southeast of the fortress, outside the walls. Black Templars trying hard. To defend the Imperial Guard base in here with their deep strike operations now into uh, this area. Bunch of dreadnoughts have been destroyed already by the horrors, hell talons, and fire prisms, as well as heavy destroyers in the area. Will a new Bane Blade manage to get out? outside the fortress walls. Even if it does, I'm afraid it will fall shortly after.
A restored monolith finally getting closer to the fortress. Teleporting ever closer. Right into uh, the base here outside the fortress. Very close to the base. Now the monolith under the heavy focus by both Bane Blade and uh, Lemon Rus. A battle tank. A child of Omnisai in here busy repairing the headquarters as well as the Bane Blade and the Lemon Rust battle tank. A loyal uh, servant and a worshipper of the Machine God, or perhaps the Void Dragon. That remains a mystery. The Bane Blade with the Lemon Rust battle tank as well as uh, with some support from the Psykers made a short work of that restored monolith. Psykers with uh, their stun abilities into the enemy vehicles, aiding the Bane Blade and the Lemon Rust battle tanks. With their stuns on the enemy vehicles. The Imperial Guard base will not fall yet. During all that time, the Black Templars are still hard at work into the enemy lands, distracting uh, the enemy and uh, hitting their bases hard. Now they even managed to take uh, strategic points, deploying servitors to build the listening posts, but can they hold that? The Necrons and the Avatar getting back in here, even a demon will approach the Black Templars, take them down. A slight smell of victory right here, right now, as the Imperials manage to get out of the fortress now easily and take control of the nearby strategic points located outside, not far away from the fortress. In the Middle East. The Land Reader will approach the Bane Blade. Two machines of doom here. Staying close to each other would mean... Um, a more powerful uh, alliance for both the Black Templars and the 101st Vandal and it will be a lot more difficult for the enemies to take down both uh, ultimate uh, vehicles down when they stay close to each other like that as well as strengthen uh, the Imperial uh, 
alliance here and uh, the spirit of war. A bunch of black tempers deployed on the high ground close to a river here in the middle making sure they can uh, stop the enemy, hold them back for as long as possible. Very slowly but, sh but surely the enemy forces will overwhelm the Black Templars and the Imperial Guards and drive them back into the fortress slowly. Both Imperial Guard and Black Templars heavily outnumbered right now by uh, the heretics. Infinite amount of Necron Warriors, Destroyers, Elder and Greenskins. The Avatar will fall. As well as the Demon Prince shortly after. Not a big achievement, however, for uh, the Emperor's servants. The Land Reader has fallen, the Bane Blade remains up strong with a Tech Priest nearby, two Tech Priests making sure it will not uh, go down easily, as well as the Psykers who can uh, stun the enemy vehicles. Fire Prisms and Defilers approaching the Chaos Predators and Orcs looted tanks. Going hard into that bane blade.
at last the Bane Blade is falling. Paid up tenfold, however. Maybe even a hundredfold as it killed tons of enemy vehicles, demons and whatnot. The outside base, close to the fortress walls, is being overwhelmed. Only a matter of time until it will be taken down. Necrons manages to um, get their tomb spiders closer and closer to um, the Black Templar's main base as well as the Imperial Guard main base. Something has to be done about that. One last building left in here, a mechanized command and a Lemon Ross battle tank guarding it. And once again, the entrance into the fortress is overwhelmed by the enemy forces. Countless Necron warriors, Greenskins, Eldar and Heretics about to enter the fortress once again. No active deep strike operations currently into the enemy lands. The Black Templars were somewhat overwhelmed from their previous attempts. They have done some devastating damage, however, and won uh, both Imperial Guard and Space Marines. Time to build up a bit outside the fortress, test uh, their strength in the open field. The time is not right yet. Two Lemon Rust battle tanks flanking the enemy at the gates. The one mechanized command still can produce both uh, Lemon Rust battle tanks and a tech priests uh, tech priest in there repairing the vehicles.
next deep strike attempt in here by the Black Templars. An attempt to deal some damage to both Necron and Elder Base. In the Middle East of the battlefield. Will they succeed? Taking down this monolith would mean a lot. Perhaps. Unfortunately for them, the Necrons have the Heavy Destroyers prepared close to the base, defending from uh, this assault. Dreadnoughts are no threat in here, and uh, the Terminators are overwhelmed by uh, the ghost damage coming from those obelisks. The heavily upgraded monolith about to be taken down. And it will. With that attack, once again now the Imperial Guard will uh, try to build a field command outside the fortress walls. Without a forward base, they cannot win the war. A fully recovered Bane Blades and Land Reader sitting inside the fortress. They will not get out just yet. That's when uh, the Bane Blade and the Land Reader come in uh, handy and very useful once the enemy is uh, getting closer. They will start dealing devastating damage. Being well positioned behind uh, the fortress walls. almost unreachable by the enemies which means the war at least will not be lost as long as these machines will stay up and running slaughtering the enemy forces a new Mars, pa Mars uh, Pattern Command here, built outside the fortress. The Bane Blade, which sits inside the fortress, can now be sacrificed. And a new one can be made now, outside the walls. The giant machine cannot get out through this narrow path. It is impossible to get past this arrow inside the fortress for the Bane Blade. The only way to get it out is to build it from this Mars Pattern Command and sacrifice the one inside the fortress. You can only have one Bane Blade and one Land Reader.
The heavy weapons teams have been hard at work for weeks now, positioned on the walls and killing endless uh, hordes of green skins, heretics, metal beings, necrodermis beings. The Mars pattern command being assaulted. Elda realizing it's a big threat. They will have to prioritize the targets and take this uh, base down, finally. And once again all that effort for nothing. The base built outside the fortress walls is taken down. And now even this key location, a strategic point, which provides valuable resources during the times of war, will be destroyed as well by the Elder. The heavy weapons teams positioned in front at the, at, uh, the walls will be taken down by the enemy firepower. Tomb Spider is no threat here in uh, the Imperial base as long as the Bane Blade uh, is around. The Avatar of Cain will now once again lead the way inside the fortress. The cursed creatures will follow. Chaos Defilers, Necrons Heavy Destroyers, Falcons, Fire Prisms. The Necron Lord is also here, he jumps on the wall, wants to take down those uh, heavy weapons teams and he will succeed. He took one, at least one team, which has been dealing devastating uh, damage for days now. Basilisks and Earthshakes once again hard at work. Without that, the war might have been lost by now. The Earthshake damage from the Basilisk is highly necessary and even mandatory in order to stop and drive back the enemy forces. as well as win Imperial Guards and Space Marines a valuable time to recover.
Quigath at the gates, struggling to pass through. A Lemon Ras, a looted tank, seemingly without a uh, driver inside, without a Gretchen's or a Nob Leader or whatever work in there to get out of uh, the way. Until that happens, the Squigath shall not pass and he is being heavily damaged by uh, the Basilisk's Earthshakes. Finally, the work inside woke up. He wants to move, get out of there, make way for uh, the huge green creature. And so the beast will pass through the gates and go inside the fortress. As soon as he reaches uh, the Bane Blade, the Assassin will also meet him with some empowered shots. A Chaos Demon has been summoned also, killing an Imperial Guard General in here with his uh, mighty sword. Then shortly after the uh, killed by uh, the Assassin. The enemies, stronger than ever now, will continue with the assault on the fortress. The Necron Lord will cast his lightning, his uh, resurrection orb once again. He's being heavily disrupted, however, and the resurrection will not uh, succeed this time. In the meantime, on the southwest of the fortress walls, the Black Templars started to establish a uh, base. That also providing uh, build uh, territory for the infantry command and a Mars pattern command. The build up on the west side of the fortress is very important. Once again, without forward bases, the war cannot be won. And now both Imperial Guard and the Black Templars will proceed with building up the bases on the west side, outside the fortress walls. The enemies certainly do not like that and they will try to stop this uh, Imperial advancement. A mech shop in here, very close to the fortress, was producing the looted tanks, squigaths and whatnot for weeks now. It's about to be taken down here. No more deep strike operations for now being performed by the Black Templars. Now they will have to guard 
these bases until uh, they will uh, get uh, heavily defended by turrets. Inside the fortress, the entrenched heavy weapons teams, Lemon Rust battle tanks, and the land reader will uh, remain and defend. While the bases will grow stronger on the outskirts of the fortress. The Black Templars managed to get a point in the middle west. The territory heavily fortified it now with a listening post and a bunch of turrets around to defend it. A very important position to defend. A key location in the area which will uh, defend the base up in here as long as this uh, will sit up once again a bane blade has been produced outside the fortress uh, mars pattern command got out and will flank into the chaos predators here The orcs are overwhelmed by the Black Templars. They know no fear today. They will march at the beast and take it down. General calling for yet another strafing run into the Elder Foes and Necrons. Immortals and Necron warriors in here, which target that Bane Blade. The elite forces of the Imperium now sitting outside the fortress gates, trying to fight back the opponent, not just defend the fortress at this point in time. The avatar creature is here, tanking into that bane blade. Tech priest will get and repair, but will it succeed? Is it fast enough to keep uh, the bane blade alive? Apparently not. Heavy damage also being done by the uh, Wraith Lords with, the, with equipped uh, Bright Lances, specialized anti-vehicle weapon, managed to take down that uh, Bane Blade.
The Bane Blade has fallen, no big deal, a new one is about to get out of the Mars Pattern Command. Almost fully built. The defenses are uh, very good at this point. The bunch of turrets, fortified listening posts, Lemon Ras battle tanks guarding the territory, and soon a Bane Blade, a new one, will get out. Defending the base in here. Again, very important. So most of the Black Templars will sit and hold the Orc attacks. While slowly also building up turrets all around. Uh, outside the fortress walls on the west side. Necrons marching into the fortress, they will not aid uh, their allies, if we can name that so, in taking down the bases on uh, the west side of their fortress walls. Instead, they will try and attack, go deep inside uh, the fortress. The Earth Shakes and the Heavy Weapons teams will make sure not to allow that, however. The war rages on now in uh, the middle of the battlefield, the Black Templars struggling to advance, cannot get past uh, the river side. They will once again get surrounded from behind. There's still work to be done at defending the fortress. This is no time to go into enemy territory yet. And so, slowly but surely, it feels like the defenses on the outskirts of the fortress will fall. The bases will be taken down once again. As chaos marches along with the orcs deeper and deeper. 
into our uh, lands once again. As soon as the Black Templars uh, left the territory in here, the Orcs will march and take down the turrets defending uh, the bases. Bane Blade now being accompanied by two Lemon Ross battle tanks constantly and um, most importantly tech priests always repairing the vehicles. A well nicely grouped attack in here from Orcs and Necrons trying to take down uh, the Black Templar's turrets in the Middle West. Predators will join uh, the party and stay close to the Bane Blade this time. It's crucial that uh, this Machine of Doom stays alive in this fight in the open field. Bane Blade has fallen once again. The Lemon Ras battle tanks have been destroyed. Tech priests annihilated. The enemy grows stronger, keeps pushing deeper into the base the outskirts of the fortress. Most of the Black Templars uh, turrets have been taken down. The 
Necrons realizing that the tomb spiders get quickly destroyed as soon as they wake up here inside the fortress walls. They will now try to drive them out of there. Out of the fortress far away from the heavy weapons teams. And turrets. New Lemon Rust battle tanks being produced as well as a new Bane Blade. The defenses have been destroyed. The heretics, necrons and greenskins will be taking down the remainders of this base. A mechanized command left, a black temple stronghold, the Mars pattern command and an infantry command. And once again, all that effort in vain. The Imperial Guards and the Black Tempers will have to start anew. A Bane Blade managed to get out of the Mars Pattern Command on the open battlefield. Surrounded and overwhelmed by the enemy forces. Severely damaged now, trying to get inside the fortress, closer to the Tech Priests for repairs. It will fall once again. Tech priests too far away from uh, the enemy hordes. They can't really just uh, get in here and uh, repair. They would get killed immediately. As soon as the enemies approach uh, the entrance to the fortress once again, an orbital uh, bombardment gets summoned in here and kills plenty of uh, enemy infantry, easing up the life of uh, 101st Vanderland as well as the Black Templars while they do recover after uh, the devastating defeat here in the open battlefield. The Basilisks, hard at work with the Earthshakes and endless uh, artillery strikes into the enemy forces, be it infantry or vehicles. Everything has to be taken down. General Casting yet another strafing run in here. The heavily upgraded enemy infantry, however, barely gets affected by that uh, strafing run damage. Orbital bombardments and uh, Basilisk's Earth Shake abilities uh, are more efficient at taking down enemy wards in here and. Uh, of vehicles. A few psychers nearby will be getting killed by the Chaos Obliterators. With the massive uh, attack from the Chaos, Works, Elda, and Necrons. The need of a yet another new Bane Blade is desperate, and here it comes. The Black Tempers are nowhere to be seen.
A preparation is being made for yet another deep strike into the enemy bases. The forces have to be driven back from the gates. The avatar of Cain getting deep inside the fortress close to the Bane Blade. It will fall. More and more strongholds and field commands have to be placed as the resources are draining up from the strategic points. Black Templars and Imperial Guard would eventually run out of resources as well as their enemies. Building up strongholds and field commands in this case would uh, ease up the situation a bit as they would uh, be provided with uh, requisition income if they build up those uh, new strongholds. The Resurrection Orb now from the Necron Lord seems to work out. As soon as those uh, machines of death wake up, they will get killed quickly by the massive firepower in the territory. A huge green creature once again getting deep inside the fortress, heavily focused by the Bane Blade, Lemon Ras battle tanks, heavy weapons teams, basilisks. Unfortunately for the assassin, he was sitting too close to the beast and has been slaughtered. But make no mistake, the Squiggoth will fall. He shall not pass. The Black Templars are nowhere to be seen inside the fortress. They are leading another deep strike operation into the enemy territory in the Necron's base. A more powerful deep strike this time, a lot more Black Templars will deploy, along with the Dreadnoughts, Terminator squads and Commanders.
to keep that spirit of war strong. A monolith gets taken down. Not a big loss at this point for uh, the Necrons. They have multiple bases scattered around uh, the Wildlands, as well as the Chaos, Elda, and Orcs. Taking down one enemy stronghold at this point is not a significant uh, goal for uh, the Black Templars. What matters though is driving back all uh, the enemies from the fortress gates. And it happens once again. A success. While the enemies uh, have been distracted by uh, the Deep Strike, the Black Templars will uh, quickly set up another stronghold in the East. Another try to build outside the fortress. Both Imperial Guard and Space Marines know uh, very well that the enemies will also run out of resources eventually, so uh, winning the day is only a matter of time now. As long as the fortress will be defended, Very few enemy forces in here now, most of them driven back by the Black Templar's assault. Slowly the Imperial Guard will have to also rebuild outside the walls. The orcs do not like the fact that the Black Templars once again build up a base here on the opposite side of their uh, war banner city. The Black Templar deep strike operations have ended. And as soon as the Black Templars get back home to defend the lands, most of the enemies also get at the gates once again. They will be hit hard 
by the basilisks, earthshakes, by the strafing runs, orbital bombardments. And they will also taste that Bane Blade guns. While the Black Templars build on the west side of the fortress walls now slowly, a more slow approach this time, Imperial Guard will have to sit inside the base and defend the passage, make sure the enemy infantry and vehicles do not get close to their uh, strongholds to the main bases. Chaos and Necrons will desperately try to endlessly march into the fortress while the Orcs will be busy fighting the Black Templars on uh, the outskirts of the fortress. Once again well, they will be trying to take down uh, the defenses and uh, the strongholds of the Black Templars. Inside the fortress, the generals, commissars, psychers, Kasserkin squads, Bane Blade, Lemon Rust battle tanks, heavy weapons teams will make sure to defend the fortress at all costs. They shall not pass today. More Necrons being awakened here by the resurrection orb from the Necron Lords. As soon as they uh, wake up, they will be earth shaked by the basilisks and taken down. The Black Templars are holding strong. The Green Skins alone will not manage to defeat them. They will need the aid of Chaos and maybe even Eldar to bridge. Most of the enemy is now driven away from uh, the fortress gates once again, or maybe it's just a planned retreat from their side. The chaos poison still affecting most of the elder chaos and uh, necron infantry.
orcs, elder, heretics, and even necrons now would be grouping up in order to attack the forward bases Imperial Garden Black Tempers are about to set up in here once again on the west side of the fortress outside the walls Another orbital bombardment summoned by the force commander, the greenskins having a hard time passing through the river. The enemy forces decided to split up and attack on both fronts, on two fronts. The Black Templars positioning their defenses closer to the fortress walls this time, placing them in front. Won't uh, be holding the positions for a long time. Positioned closer to the walls is a safer option. most of them closer to each other turrets will be covering each other as well as uh, defending uh, the buildings a mechanized command from the imperial guard an infantry command and now a new mars pattern command about to get finished a bane blade is desperately needed in the open fields of battle The Black Templars and Imperial Guard are still outnumbered 4 to 1. During the defenses of the forward bases, the Imperial Guard has managed to take back up the strategic points on the fortress's walls and build up the strategic points, thus gaining some income on a requisition from them. A few points have been decapped by the enemy earlier in uh, during the battle. They had to be recaptured and rebuilt with uh, listening posts. The Imperial Guard will be focusing on defending the gates inside the fortress, making sure the enemies won't go through. The Black Templars will slowly try to move uh, forward towards uh, the Orcs uh, 
City of War banners. The Bane Blade is now out on open battlefields, ready to deal devastating damage and uh, hold uh, the entrance into uh, the fortress from the outside. We'll be flanking into those enemies from the left. Tech Priest will not allow this Lemon Rust battle tank to fall today, it will be repaired and brought into the battle next to the Bane Blade. The Elder Necrons marching along with the Heretics towards the west. They desperately want to take down this base outside the fortress. A huge threat for all of them. The Black Templars today won't give up as easily on uh, their uh, forward base today, however, they will sit in here and defend at all costs. Losing the forward base one more time. Would certainly play to Space Marines and Imperial Guard a disadvantage as the, uh, now they start to get limited by time. The longer the battle goes, the weaker the supply in lines of uh, power, income and requisition gets. And without a forward base outside the fortress, there ba there's basically no Bane Blade on uh, the battlefield. It is mandatory to defend it. The heavy destroyers in here made an easy job out of that Lemon Ross along with the Chaos Predators. Thankfully it was not the Bane Blade. This time the Bane Blade will sit behind uh, the defenses in a nice uh, cover behind the listening posts. close to the fortress walls 
covered by turrets also. A much better build up this time by uh, both Black Templars and 101st Vandalins. Tech Priests. The Black Templars and the Imperial Guards are heavily overwhelmed. Now months into this uh, war... Their morale fades. And growing short. But this is no day to give up. The force commander Yindrik Boreal summons yet another orbital strike at the fortress gates. Making it difficult for the enemies to go in. And so most of the enemy forces once again have been pushed back from the fortress. A tiny relief for the guardsmen. It is time now for the Black Templars and the Imperial Guard to work together on a counter-attack towards the enemy bases. while also making sure that the forward base outside the fortress will not fall. Chaos marches at full strength once again towards the Land Raider and the Bane Blades with their cursed uh, predators and defilers.
the land raider will fall to the demons. And now the Bane Blade is under heavy fire from the warp creatures. And it will shortly follow after the land raider and get destroyed. The morale of the Black Templars and uh, 101st is definitely devastated once again as their forward bases are beginning to fall for the third time now. The Elder pushing hard into the fortress with the Avatar leading the way. The heavy weapons teams haven't gone anywhere. They would sit entrenched on the walls, ready to defend at any time of the day. A very sudden and unexpected attack by the Yelda, about to get close to the main stronghold of the Black Templars and field commands of the 101st Vandaland. In the meantime, the Black Templars are busy on the outskirts of the fortress still, fighting back the Greenskins and Green Metal even making sure the forward bases will not fall. The heavy weapons teams on the other hand along with the basilisks will make sure the necrons along with the Yelda won't uh, reach the strongholds and field commands. And now a Bane Blade sitting inside the fortress. Most of the enemies barely managing to scratch him because of his positioning inside the fortress and his range of uh, fire. Sitting inside the fortress is not an option. The Imperial Guard will need guardsmen in the open battlefield to fight and push back the Xenos, Heretics and Necrons. The Bane Blade inside the fortress had to be sacrificed now that uh, the enemy assault failed 
and a new Bane Blade will be ordered from the Mars Pattern Command outside the fortress. As soon as that happens, however, the Elder along with the heretics are ready to go inside the fortress once again. Now without a Baneblade defending it. The Necrons have also brought new forces in here, more Tomb Spiders and Heavy Destroyers within the fortress, keeping the Guardsmen inside the fortress, forcing them to fight back their way out. The war is seemingly endless for both the Black Templars and the Imperial Guard guarding the gates. The never-ending hordes of enemies never uh, cease fire, always approaching at the gates. Trying to take down the fortress, guardsmen will bravely hold. The war on the outskirts of the fortress has been raging on for days for the Black Templars. They've been fighting the works in here. Non-stop all this time.
Without the tech priests in the open fields, the servitors must be put to work by the Black Templars at repairing the Lemon Rust battle tanks and the Bane Blade. Tech priests in very limited numbers, busy inside the fortress, building up the listening posts, fortifying them, and repairing our buildings and vehicles. The Predators and the Land Reader will join the Bane Blade along with the Lemon Rod Battle Tanks. Together, this is almost unstoppable firepower. It must be sustained though by the Servitors and Tech Priests constantly with the repairs. The Imperial Guard General will stay inside the fortress and lead the way here for the Guardsmen, boost their morale during the defense of the fortress. An assault from Necron's played ones in here trying to desperately take down that Bane Blade and a Lemon Rust battle tank. Infiltrated heretics also nearby and uh, horrors getting deployed close to the Bane Blade. This being their priority target right now. The most devastating unit on the battlefield. The Bane Blade manages to retreat inside the fortress. No tech priests nearby, however, to repair it at this point in time. And the Avatar is getting closer. Also on the edge of death in here, getting killed. No servitors and no tech priests to save this Bane Blade. It will go down and perhaps a new one will be produced in the Lemon in uh, the Mars Pattern Command. It has been ordered in production right now, but the Mars Pattern Command has been targeted by the heretics and Necrons has been destroyed and the outskirts are overwhelmed once again the forward bases of the black templars and 101st are likely to fall
the war between the Black Templars and the Greenskins is never ending here in the middle west of the battlefield the orcs continue their endless assault on the black templars defenses they will now manage to take down the fortified listening post and, uh, uh, and several turrets in uh, the area The Imperial Guard force is as busy as ever inside the fortress defending the entrance into uh, the fortress. It is crucial that no enemies slips by and get close to those field commands. The avatar almost taken down by the assassin uh, shots. And heavy weapons teams of course. A new Mars pattern command has been placed. It has to be built. This time by the servitors, no tech priests nearby. One gets out of the field command now to aid those servitors and build this mechanized uh, the Mars pattern command faster. Three basilisks now inside the fortress, more earth shakes have to be cast into the bunch of uh, heretics, necrons and elder entering the fortress. Massive supports for those heavy weapons teams. During this assault, the Bane Blade uh, will be produced inside the fortress about to get out. There he goes. The heavy weapons teams with the Basilisks alone almost failed to defend the fortress. The aid of a Bane Blade is desperately needed in here. The Tomb Spider manages to take down uh, the Basilisks in there. The defenses are almost down inside the fortress. All the Basilisks have been destroyed. Necrons, Greenskins and even Heretics now marching closer to the 101st uh, Field Command. and Black Templar strongholds, the main ones. If the bases inside the fortress fall, 
it's only a matter of time until the forward bases are also will be taken down. Defending the bases inside the fortress is a key objective. And it cannot be neglected. The war has been raging on for weeks now on the outskirts of the fortress. The Black Templars have been fighting non-stop. With the Bane Blade aiding the heavy weapons teams, the Necrons have been pushed back, most of them killed. It will now have to sit in here during the recovery of Imperial Guards. Two new Basilisks coming out, ready to defend and cast their Earthshakes into the enemy forces. of heretics and necrons marching towards the fortress once again. The war is far from over. over. None of the sides even think of giving up at this point.
over half of the base of the forward base has been destroyed once again but not fully destroyed and that's a good uh, thing the land raider two predators whirlwind and two lemon rust battle tanks sitting behind a damaged mechanized command well positioned in defensive formation will not allow the green skins to get close and take down uh, the remaining buildings inside the fortress most of the enemy attacks have been uh, stopped the heretics will continue their attacks towards uh, the forward base as well as send a few units uh, inside the fortress the bane blade continues to stay inside currently sitting outside is too risky not not enough uh, black templars uh, deployed right now outside the walls to defend uh, the almighty war machine keeping it inside is a safe bet it will make sure the enemy attacks will fail Demon Prince in here taking down over half of the Bane's Blade uh, hit points. Severely damaged right now. The Demon will fall. coordinated well coordinated attack now from the enemy forces a bunch of green skins heretics and necrons nearby marching heavily at full force towards that bane blade they want the thing down at all costs that will not happen today however The Black Templars will continue to defend the forward base. This is their job. No tech priests nearby to repair the Bane Blade. The fire dragons managed to apply the last hits, take uh, the machine of doom down, a new one in production right away. A bunch of heavy destroyers in here, tomb spiders and elder marching into the fortress. Some of the Black Templars also uh, deploy inside the fortress, making sure the enemies will not pass.
And so the Necron forces and the heretics are being pushed back slowly. Two fallen tomb spiders uh, deep into the fortress now. Three tomb spiders, when they wake up, they're causing quite a bit of trouble in there. Imperial Guard not having any specialized anti vehicle uh, infantry besides the heavy weapons teams equipped with the last cannons are having a hard time taking these uh, ancient uh, machines down. The Bane Blade is here, however, back in full force. Ready to defend the fortress. Two Lemon Rust battle tanks positioned outside. Defending the forward base. The remainders of this base. The assault on the fortress has been stopped, guardsmen managed to get out, and we'll now try to fight alongside the Black Templars, perhaps initiate a counter-attack into uh, the enemy territory. As soon as the guardsmen get out of the fortress, heretics initiate an attack into them, dropping their morale, pushing them back a bit closer to the fortress walls. And the Necrons will follow shortly after the Heretics. There they go.
most of the Necrons getting obliterated. They cannot even get close to the Guardsmen and the Black Templars within range to deal any damage. Thanks to the plasma weapons and uh, grenade launchers equipped on Guardsmen as well as heavy bolters equipped on the Black Templars. Most of the infantry will get slaughtered without uh, being given the chance to get close. A Farseer uh, close nearby casts her uh, Psychic Storm. That however not affecting the Guardsmen at all with so many Commissars nearby. Executing Guardsmen and making sure the Spirit of War does not fall. No Mars pattern commands left on the outskirts of the fortress. A new one has to be built for the Bane Blade to be able to fight in the open field once again. The endless work assaults will continue in here, the Black Templars not being offered even a moment of rest during months of war. Now they are getting used to that. The 101st Vandal and uh, Chief Commanders decided to now uh, bring a uh, basilisks closer to the enemy fields and perhaps try to cast some Earthshake devastating firepower into their uh, buildings. Another step closer to the war perhaps. For now, however, the basilisks will have to stay behind and also make sure that the fortress is well defended. The Chaos, Heretics and Necrons marching once again into those Lemon Rust battle tanks, disrupting the morale of the Guardsmen a bit now. The enemies in huge numbers, forcing Guardsmen to fall back a bit. Even infiltrated cultists are lurking nearby, getting now detected by the Black Templar's Librarian and eliminated from the battlefield within seconds. Three servitors at once repairing a land reader, a key a unit into defending now the base. If the enemy forces do not send all their uh, infantry and vehicles inside the fortress, then they will send all of them towards uh, the outside forward base, which is now mostly defended by predators and the land raider, repairing it is a very important objective. Keeping it up, more Black Templars being deployed on uh, the open field, 
to defend and finally a new Mars Pattern Command has been placed positioned by the Imperial Guard Tech Priests the Servitors will now go and build it Moving a bit forward with the defensive lines, both the Black Templars and uh, the 101st Vandaland group together. Only the Bane Blade is missing in here. It is desperately needed. For now, it will sit within. Uh, the walls of the fortress to make sure no enemies will get close to those uh, main uh, bases of the Black Templars and Imperial Guards. Psychers in the area also aiding the bunch of guardsmen and black templars with their stuns on the enemy machines. The general casting his uh, strafing run, dropping a bit of the HP on those enemy squads The Imperial Guard being uncertain whether they will be able to hold these positions or not, do not hurry with uh, the production of a Bane Blade outside the fortress. Not yet at least. The enemy could be sending their uh, forces inside uh, the fortress at any time now. The Bane Blade will stay in there for quite some time still. The mechanized command heavily damaged, no tech priests free to repair, the lone tech priest in open field repairing uh, the land reader along with two other servitors of the black templars. The mechanized command will fall, most likely taken down by a uh, looted tank from the orcs. A very strong defensive line right here in uh, the middle.
The Bane Blade sits inside the fortress. He's also useful at taking down those tomb spiders uh, quickly, making sure they will not uh, take down the basilisks which uh, sit inside the fortress or other key buildings necessary in this war. Producing uh, the guardsmen summoning them on the battlefield means less heavy weapons teams inside the fortress for defense also. So the Bane Blade is uh, very much welcomed to sit in there while the enemies still uh, lurk very close to the gates. The Elder will try to go in once again. A Farseer with a Seer Council trying to get inside Perhaps trying to get some information. All the key buildings still up for the 101st Vandaland, as well as for the Black Templars. The listening posts heavily fortified on the fortress walls. And very slowly but surely the Black Templars along with the Imperial Guardsmen getting closer to the enemy positions. Getting closer to the enemy territory only to be pushed back shortly after. The Farseer accompanied by the Seer Council in here casting Psychic Storms and Eldritch Storms into uh, the Black Templars and Imperial Guardsmen, dropping their morale and trying to push them uh, back into the fortress. That would mean the forward base will be taken down by the Orcs eventually. 
a well-planned uh, strategy by the Elder. Now that, that uh, the forward positions are heavily fortified, the listening posts fully upgraded, and with turrets uh, building along uh, the fortress uh, walls, it's time to order that Bane Blade in the Mars Pattern Command located outside the fortress. It is heavily needed in this war. Without a Bane Blade, there's simply not enough firepower to stop uh, all these uh, enemies at once, let alone uh, push them back or even take ba down uh, their bases. As the enemies get closer to the fortress once again, the force commander initiates another orbital bombardment into uh, the enemy infantry. A very well cast one. The Bane Blade is here, back to the battlefield. Ready to join the forces. Along with the Land Raider, Predators and Lemon Rust battle tanks. The Basilisks now uh, earth shaking the, uh, the enemy work uh, territory. Trying to t take down key production buildings and their city of war banners. The defensive lines growing uh, bigger with each day. Slowly turning into offensive lines with all this bunch of infantry and uh, heavy vehicles. The Black Templars want to march towards uh, the east. For now they will still hold the middle. No enemy shall enter the fortress anymore.
a bit of a split up now. The Black Templar is getting further away from the Guardsmen. And Guardsmen getting further away from the Black Templars. Trying to split the forces. The Imperial Guard advancing slowly towards uh, the north west while the Black Templars will slowly move towards uh, the north east. The Bane Blade here on the high ground along with a bunch of guardsmen making sure the orcs will not pass uh, past uh, the river in the middle of the map. The orc city will grow smaller by the day, as more and more earthshakes will be cast onto the war banners. The march towards the northeast is pretty troublesome. Necrons and Elda with very well coordinated attacks fighting back. Servitors as well as the uh, tech priests working non-stop during the war, repairing uh, the tanks on the battlefields. A few dormant tomb spiders still sitting in there inside the fortress, not a threat at this point during the Black Templar's assault. It gets uh, closer to the Necrons base, the Necrons will have to get their tomb spiders out of the fortress if they ever wake up, get them back close to their homes and defend themselves. A counter-attack is real and grows strong now as both Imperial Guard and the Black Templars get closer and closer to the enemy bases, now almost in the enemy territory. Several production buildings here in front, well positioned by the Elda. They have been producing uh, their powerful uh, high-tech machines out of these uh, support portals for months now during the war. The 
They will be taken down. Brave Grey Knights in here fighting the demons. Quickly taking them down. Seeing that uh, the Black Templar struggle towards the Middle East side of the battlefield, Imperial Guard decides to get their uh, tanks a bit closer to the Black Templars, aiding them in that battle, while also making sure that the Orcs will not go deep into the forward base. These positions have to be defended also. No more tomb spiders inside the fortress, the necrons have managed to take them out almost. Basilisk hard at work, the lone basilisk in uh, the open field right now. Casting earth shakes on the orc uh, territory, taking down war banners and production buildings. Two basilisks now. The orcs are back in full strength with now a squigath accompanying flash gates, mega armored knobs, trying to fight back the imperial guard elite uh, tanks on the high ground. Squigath, the huge creature that he is, cannot even pass through the obstacles here in the river. He gets severely damaged 
by the Bang Blade, Lemon Rust Battle Tanks and uh, Basilisk's Earth Shakes. The works will have to retreat. Today they will not pass. On the other side of the battlefield, the Black Templars continue their assault, moving closer and closer to the river also. Bunch of Elder and Necrons in there still uh, making their life difficult. Holding the lines well. The firepower is not sufficient to fight back all the enemies at once. The Chaos will once again rise and march through the middle now with their machines. Horrors demons and whatnot. Another try in here for the green skins with a bunch of uh, work infantry, a huge horde of green skins passing through the river and taking down the Imperial Guard basilisks. A huge threat for the work uh, base. The Bane Blade has been heavily damaged by the looted tanks. On the other end of the battlefield, the Squigath will fall. No more guardsmen on the battlefield, the bunch of them have been killed. Another strategy has been advised by the generals. They will slowly push in with the heavy weapons teams on the high ground, with the very high range of fire. They will manage to slowly take down the war bonners from a huge distance as well as any other work buildings that stands in their ways. For now they will be positioned far behind the front lines where the Bane Blade sits, the few turrets, to deal with the orc infantry first. In the south east the Black Templars have been overwhelmed, heavily outnumbered by uh, Elda and Necrons and pushed back to the middle. In the front of the fortress, they will sit here and uh, try to deny them entrance into the fortress. The Bane Blade is still up and running, the Land Reader is still up and running. The war continue to rage. It 
It rages on for eternity now. A very powerful coordinated uh, attack now from the Necrons, Greenskins, Chaos and Eldar. Easily overwhelming the Black Templars in the middle of the map. They will need the aid of the Baneblades, Lemon Rust battle tanks and perhaps even heavy weapons teams. Two basilisks here at the entrance into the fortress will cast uh, the Earthshakes which will take down loads of uh, enemy infantry as well as vehicles. This is no way to die. The heavy artillery strikes, the orbital bombardments will stop this powerful assault from the enemy. And this road leads to victory. And so the Black Templars and the Imperial Guard will push the enemies back once again. The Bane Blade at the front lines has been destroyed by the Orc Hordes. A new one is being produced in the Mars Pattern Command. A moment of glory has been celebrated. A 
And there they come again. Another strong attack from Necrons, Eldar and Heretics in the area. And they shall fall. In the meantime, the heavy weapons teams trying to get closer to the orcs' uh, main base. The general is uh, up there at the front lines now for days, guiding the heavy weapons teams as well as the remainder of uh, the Imperial Guard infantry on how to proceed with the tactics and uh, strong uh, strategical advices. The Black Templars also sending two Predators into the orcs uh, territory Unfortunate for the predators they cannot uh, reach the war banners unless they stay within range of uh, firepower they will get damaged by uh, the rockets on the war banners taken down within minutes Each day a step closer to the enemy base for Imperial Guardsmen here in the middle west side of the battlefield. The war rages on in the middle during all this time. Black Templars defending and fighting bravely, fighting back the enemy. The foul greenskins, the filthy xenos, and traitor heretics. The Bane Blade once again positioned on the high ground, posing a huge threat for the orcs. The looted tanks trying to desperately take it down, the Chaos Demons bringing a creature in here trying to damage the almighty machine fighting for the Emperor.
The heavy weapons teams growing strong on the high ground in bigger numbers now. Damaging those orc listening posts and war banners from a distance. The Yelda is getting closer to the fortress gates. They shall not pass, however. The brave Black Tempers will hold the gates and won't let any foul Xenos inside the fortress. The teams handling the basilisks hard at work in the region with precise focus on the orc war banners and buildings taking them down slowly but surely. Necrons marching endlessly towards the fortress gates. Accompanied by Elda and Chaos forces. The Black Templars holding strong. While in the midwest of the battlefield, the heavy weapons teams keep getting closer and closer to the work base, now positioning themselves right in the middle of the map in the river 
taking down the war banners from a distance. And the Black Templars on the other hand, slowly pushing back the enemy. The Black Templars decided to send their land reader into the Orc territory also. Most of the war banners upgraded with the rocket launchers will make short work of this uh, vehicle. The amount of war banners upgraded to specialized anti-vehicle weaponry will manage to destroy this war machine very quickly. The heavy weapons teams in danger right now. The huge uh, Squigathiv is there to deal with them. They have to retreat, fall back and position them themselves on the high ground. Like that. Try to always keep that distance. Keep it far away from the enemy. And a new land reader is desperately needed on the battlefield in the middle. As the Black Templars begin to grow short, grow small in numbers, slowly being eliminated by the Necrons and Eldar. Three heavy weapons teams remain inside the fortress, just in case there will be a backdoor attack in there by any air units perhaps. The defenses inside the fortress won't uh, hurt. Maybe even mandatory to keep them in there. The brand new land reader is here, back in full force. The Black Templars march forward. Once again getting uh, close to that uh, river. In the middle of the battlefield.
As soon as the Black Templars approach the river positions and trying to pass through the Eldar, Necrons and Chaos always ready to push them back and they do. Most of the Black Templars have fallen once again. On the other side of uh, the battlefield, the heavy weapons teams, along with the Basilisks and the Earthshakes, eliminated more than half of the Orc city, formed up of uh, war banners on the high ground. Most of that has been destroyed. Chaos realizing that their green skins allies are falling uh, down slowly came in here on uh, the middle uh, west side of the battlefield trying to push back both the Imperial Guard and now a new land reader in there. Massive threat for the green skins uh, base positioned on the opposite side of the river as well as two chaos strongholds in there and several key production buildings from heretics the imperial guard has to be pushed back pushed back far away from here a huge threat
Servitors, Tech Priests sitting next to that Bane Blade. Only one of them can repair uh, this huge machine at once. Cannot make use of all uh, of them at once, like on the Land Reader, where you can repair it with 3-4 uh, Servitors. The big green beast cannot pass through the river on the other side of the map, so it always has to go through the east side. On this side you have more space and it can pass through there. No restored monolith, supposing that the Elder controls uh, most of the relics now. Most likely they took uh, the relic point from the Necrons, the Elder. They cannot allow the, their ancient enemy to be in control of a relic point by the end of this battle. It would mean their doom on this planet. Orcs can barely hold these Imperial Guard attacks now. They have been overwhelmed, most likely running out of um, requisition, barely managing to fight back. The Chaos uh, Demons once again marching through the middle, accompanying that huge uh, beast, the Squigath. Fortunately for them, the Bane Blade is quite far away, busy dealing with the orcs here. And once again, the Black Templars have been overwhelmed by the Necron forces in the middle of the battlefield. Thankfully, that land reader is still up in full force, being always repaired by three servitors at once. As long as it stands, they are good. And likewise on the other side, the Bane Blade is up and running in full force, aiding the Guardsmen in this war versus the Orcs.
most of the enemies eliminated from uh, the Imperial Guard and the Space Marine side of the map. Perfect timing for a counter-attack for the Black Templars to march towards that river and perhaps get to the other side into that Necron base. The gigantic war machine in here, the Bane Blade, the Tank of Doom cannot pass to the other side through the narrow paths in here and obstacles sitting in front of the gigantic uh, thing. The only way it can go to the other side of the river is to pass through the east side. Black Templars feeling great right now, a moment of relief for them. Although the fight has not stopped for a second for uh, months now. In their minds, this war has been lasting an eternity now. There is no need to hurry with a Bane Blade on the other side of the river. Still a lot of work to do in eliminating the green skins which are trying to pass through the river. The earth shakes constantly being applied on the enemy forces, they get hit hard. The Elder and Necrons here on the east, almost overwhelmed by the Black Templars. The counter-attack so far works out quite nicely for the Black Templars. On the west side, the next attempt to get closer to the Orc uh, city almost, not even a base, it's a city of war banners in here. Orc and Chaos Strongholds. The Chaos forces continue to march through the middle. The other two sides are uh, heavily 
fortified now, at least the one on the west side. Bunch of heavy weapons teams in the rivers getting ever closer to the orcs, banners, listening posts, strongholds. And on the other side the Black Templars are falling down once again to the Necron forces and Eldar. Nothing to do there for the heretics. Seeing as the Imperial Guard gets closer once again to the Orc bases, the heretics get in here as well as the Elder, trying to push back the Guardsmen. They are way too powerful and they deal way too much damage to those Orc uh, buildings. The Necrons and the Elder managed to push back the Black Templars. Most of the enemies eliminated in the east. The Black Templars time to counter-attack and rise to glory. The Imperial Guard now will also aid them in the next attack with the Baneblade and Lemon Ras battle tanks while defending the west side with the Bane with uh, the Basilisks heavy weapons teams. The general will sit there to make sure the guardsmen don't fall uh, short on uh, morale. Passing through the river now on this side will be a huge challenge for both uh, the Black Templars and Imperial Guard as most powerful forces from the enemy are located on the east. Their most devastating units can only pass through this area of the map.
once again the Imperial Guard fighting bravely alongside the Space Marines in the battle of their lifetime. Most of the orcs cleaned up on the west side of the map. The general will slowly advance to scout the territory for new targets for those basilisks earthshakes. They will be taking down this orc outpost in there in the middle of uh, the battlefield. Now the Black Templars on the east, with the support from the Bane Blades and a Lemon Ras battle tank, will likely manage to get to the other side of the river finally. After months of slaughter in the front of the fortress, they will finally manage to pass on the other side of the river. In the west, the heavy weapons teams still positioned in the river, they can still reach a few of the orc buildings as, uh, as far as they can see. As long as they can see the orc buildings, they can still reach them and deal some damage. And the same can be done by the basilisks. And so the war will continue and advance to the enemy territory now, slowly. The middle bridge is now being uh, held by a land reader under the, the repair of three uh, servitors. Accompanied by two predators, unfortunately the land reader will fall. It managed to take down that Squigath, however, didn't get uh, destroyed for nothing. And so very slowly the heavy weapons will advance, getting closer and closer to the orc base once again. Multiple orbital bombardments have been cast in the area, overwhelming the enemy infantry forces, making it difficult for them to get close to that bane blade and other infantry squads on the high ground. This is the land of the dead, the orcs won't even try to approach in there now. They will march through the middle along with the heretics.
holding the high ground nicely now, both the Imperial Guard and the Black Templars. Not a step closer to the fortress anymore for uh, the enemy forces. The Bane Blade will lead the way in the east towards the north side of the enemy territory getting in the river now in the water about to cross the line and with some support from the Black Templars it, it will it can and it will get to the enemy side into what is now known as enemy territory very dangerous still Dreadnoughts being deep striked into the enemy bases constantly now. They are effective at both dealing damage and uh, absorbing the damage from whatever weapons the Necrons have in there. And so the Black Templars march to victory. Very slowly though. While the Imperial Guard still busy taking down that work base slowly. There is no need to rush with the advancement into the enemy lines. Moving a step closer to their bases is, is sufficient and holding it. They do not have to rush it now and uh, mess up all the work they've done until now. A very patient, slow but effective tactic is being put to work here by Imperial Guard. A very slow advancement with uh, the heavy weapons teams into now work uh, base and uh, chaos bases. A Squigath gets in here to deal with them. Most likely the creature will take them down. There is nothing around to take it uh, down. It's way too powerful. But it will eventually fall also. The assassin from the Imperial Guard is here to deal with it. Oh, 
also getting fo focused now heavily by uh, the heavy weapons teams earth shakes from the basilisks and it goes down the territory will be held on the other side the black templars slowly getting closer into uh, the necron base almost it's both a necron base in here and even an elder base Established a uh, web assembly next to the monolith. And so the Bane Blade finally passes the river into uh, the enemy territory. Getting closer to the Black Templars, aiding them in this fight at the Necron's base. Is Quigath shows up in here in uh, the yeast with the help of a bunch of Necrons, Necron Lords, the Bane Blade, uh, as well as the Lemon Rust battle tank will be taken down. And so Necrons almost fought back. The Black Templars pushed them back of their base. The Imperial Guard, on the other hand, not even thinking to stop their assaults into the work base, they will continue. So far a very successful uh, strategy as advised by the general. They were sitting next to these heavy weapons teams for a, a long time, teaching them on how to proceed and how to advance into the enemy territory very slowly. The Black Templars have to fall back for a while. A new Bane Blade is required in production right now. Falling back and regrouping in there for the Black Templars was a necessity. They should rather retreat and regroup rather than uh, sit in the enemy territory and get killed. They have to wait for a uh, Bane Blade to support them and maybe some Lemon Rust battle tanks. Okay. 
Black Templars deciding to send their uh, land raider in front. Perhaps for for uh, scouting purposes and will now deep strike on the enemy territory once again. The land raider is there to lead the way. And the Bane Blade is also out again. It cannot pass through this side of the battlefield. It will have to go uh, on the other side and accompany the Black Templars. Imperial Guards march towards the work as well as the Chaos bases in here as strong as ever. With so many Commissars nearby, they have a very strong morale. Ready to fight for weeks to come. Hold strong, Black Templars. The Bane Blade is almost there. Hundreds have fallen, thousands wounded. Apothecaries at hard work in their bases, trying to heal up thousands of uh, Black Templars, uh, warriors. So they could join the fight uh, later once again. Thousands of guardsmen have been killed and never brought back to life. Two elite vehicles of doom, kill machines in the Middle East, taking down that squigath quick and eliminating the remaining uh, threats now rather easily when grouped together like that. The Imperial Guard capturing a strategic point in the enemy land, building a uh, listening post in there and maybe another forward base would be a massive step closer to victory strafing run being cast on top of that assassin it had to be sacrificed so it could kill a bunch of uh, green skins in there Now 
Now the Black Templars decided to aid the 101st Vangeland. In here dropping a few dreadnoughts, tanking into those uh, defilers and war banners. The Orc Stronghold is almost down. The main Orc Stronghold heavily focused by the heavy weapons teams. On the other side, the Black Templars, the two elite vehicles holding the river side, holding it, defending it strong. The listening post in the enemy territory has been finished. Now in need of repairs and uh, shortly after the next forward base for the Imperial Guard will follow. Huge success with this tactic initiated by uh, the General on the Imperial Guard. Genius tactics for the win. Felt like there's no other way. For the glory of the Imperium. The uh, Land Raider and the Bane Blade still up and running. Holding strong. Four servitors uh, close to the machines, always ready to repair them in case they fall short on uh, hit points. When heavily damaged, they can be repaired quick. Another demon has fallen. The next forward base for the Imperial Guard, another step closer to victory in here. The field command has been finished. And now they can start uh, producing uh, infantry and vehicles, which means uh, it will get faster into the enemy territory with constant pressure and attacks fast strikes on uh, the orcs and chaos will devastate them. The Bane Blade focused by the immortals and their obelisks of doom getting repaired by a servitor now heavily damaged likely to be destroyed yes, yes, of course, no. 
in desperate need uh, of repairs from a tech priest. The tech priests can repair faster than uh, a single servitor. The avatar has been stuck in here for uh, ages, blocked by uh, their own uh, web gates, couldn't move. Dirty Elder Tricks. More and more deep strikes here into uh, the Necron's base. They're about to face their doom. It's about time. The infantry command has been established into the enemy lands. Now the heavy weapons teams can uh, get uh, can get reinforced uh, very quickly, right next to the enemy base, which means a faster victory. Basically, it's a matter of time now until the enemies fall. It's been months into this huge war of the Imperium and it finally feels like it was worth it. As soon as a heavy weapon team falls, another one is ready to come out and support the remaining ones. A very successful assault on the west side of the battlefield in the east. The Black Templar struggling a bit while there's no Bane Blade nearby. Too many Necrons and Elda in there lurking around. The Imperial Guard almost took down most of the works base. About half uh, left. The main work stronghold has been uh, taken down. The assassin in here being fought by the Slugger boys and possessed uh, Chaos Marines. A matter of time until he gets uh, killed, slaughtered. He fought bravely for a very long time. With the coming of the Squigath on the battlefield in here, most of the heavy weapons teams have been uh, killed. Guardsmen in need of uh, new ones ASAP. Thanks to this uh, forward base they can uh, reinforce uh, quite fast. 
in the east the black templars have been pushed back uh, once again by uh, the necron and elder forces they have a rather strong alliance today and it must be stopped Time for another attack from the Black Templars into the Necron's base. The Force Commander will cast an orbital bombardment on that avatar. The webway gate has been destroyed and the avatar has been released from his prison now. Ready to fight, but what can it do against all this uh, Black Templars? and a land reader. So far so good, the Black Templars can at least hold the riverside here in the middle, not allowing the Necrons and Elder to pass is already a huge achievement. The bunch of uh, reinforced heavy weapons teams now back uh, to the battlefield will continue to slowly take down the Orc bases. Psychers, great support for the heavy weapons teams, stunning those uh, defilers. The cursed machine has been stopped and destroyed. Quigath shows up on the battlefield. No longer a surprise nor threat for the Imperial forces. They have seen enough. Finally, a successful attack in here by the Black Templars manages to take down uh, the Necron Monolith. Two webway assemblies left. Most likely they will be destroyed as well. It's about time.
As soon as the works produce any vehicles, they get stunned by the Psykers, very well positioned in between the heavy weapons teams. Will not allow those uh, enemy tanks to deal any damage. Two web ray assemblies of the Yelda have been destroyed. The upgraded monolith has been destroyed. Chaos and Orc forces st still trying to fight back the Guardsmen, push them back at all costs. Doesn't work well for them. The Black Templars marching to their victory, deeper into the Necrons and Elders base now. Closer than ever to victory. Massive relief for both Imperial Guard and Space Marines. It's been almost a year since the war began. And so the Necrons have fallen one year into the war, a massive achievement for uh, the Black Templars and the 101st Vandalands. The victory is close. The tricky Elda the traitor heretics and the foul green skins left. And they will be eliminated from the lands of the Imperium. A very successful forward base so far for the Imperial Guard right here in the middle west of the battlefield. Supply lines almost built into uh, the Orc territory.
The Elder are almost defeated. Most of their listening posts, weather gates, and assemblies have been taken down by the brave warriors. Servitors still hard at work towards the end of the war. The enemy forces are overwhelmed. The Yelda have been destroyed. The Org base and the Chaos base almost fully destroyed as well. strongholds left, some demon pits from the chaos, enemies running out of resources, running out of uh, supplies, they cannot uh, oppose the imperial might anymore. They have been heavily overwhelmed. Sneaky Elder still having some web hay gates in here. In the end they have decided to even uh, make work's life difficult by blocking uh, the production uh, facilities with web hay gates so the units would uh, struggle to get out. If they cannot win the war, nobody will. The orc has fallen. And so the Imperial Guard and the Black Templars come out victorious in the end. They have annihilated the enemy. A bit over a year into this war, the Alliance has been successful so far. A very hard-fought uh, victory in the end. We will get to the start screen in a moment.
And so in this battle I have fought alongside uh, Crusader. I was playing as the Imperial Guard in this game and uh, Crusader was handling uh, Space Marines, the Black Templars. We were fighting against uh, four uh, insane skirmish AI modded uh, modded AI basically they fight a lot more harder when you have the skirmish mods now we'll have a look at the stats in the end I uh, managed to kill 11,666 enemy f uh, infantry vehicles and whatnot. I have destroyed 193 buildings, only lost 1746 guardsmen, lost 116 buildings, bunch of listening posts, turrets, mechanized commands, Mars pattern commands, and so on. Getting the best score on military, I have managed to kill uh, 1658 more units compared to Crusader, thanks to uh, the Basilisk's Earthshakes, I believe, and uh, a very well positioned uh, heavy weapons teams. Also, the Bane Blade, of course. On the other hand, Crusader uh, manages to destroy a lot more buildings. Not a lot more, but significantly more buildings compared to me thanks to his uh, deep strike capabilities into enemy territory. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, fight. It almost felt like eternity of watching and uh, casting this in a slightly different format. I hope uh, you enjoyed it and it was uh, worth the effort. It took us years of experience to get good at the game and a strong willpower in, uh, when fighting against these uh, AI uh, computers, computer-controlled uh, factions, Chaos, Eldar, Orcs and Necrons. Huge thanks to brother Ericus also for uh, writing the prologue story please check it out in the pinned comment it will be available and you can also check uh, the links to his pages in uh, the video description as well as the pinned comment big thanks also to the music composers I have used uh, soundtracks from Dawn of War 1, Dawn of War 2, Battlefleet Gothic Armada uh, Mechanicus, Gladius, Relics of War, and um, Warhammer 40k Space Marines. Also soundtracks from uh, Dawn of War 2 and Dawn of War 3, of course. A massive thanks goes to all the music composers and those companies which brought uh, this music to life basically on resources I gather uh, more requisition Crusader gathers slightly more power I do spend more power however I had to always spend power and requisition on uh, the Basilisk's Earthshakes, those abilities cost a ton of resources, so they have been used almost non-stop throughout uh, the battle. I almost uh, did not feel my hands by the end of this battle. We played this in uh, 2016, in April 2016, I believe. We could have given up so many times when... Uh, the orc, uh, when the enemy forces managed to take down those outside uh, 
forward bases outside the fortress. However, we didn't. We kept believing in ourselves that this is possible. It was indeed quite a challenge. Taking down any of the bases were almost, was almost impossible for a Crusader. He, he kept trying, but it was impossible. Taking down a base would have meant a much more easy life for us and uh, finishing uh, the war much faster. Maybe it's for the better that uh, those deep strike operations failed. I mean, they mostly drove back the enemies from the fortress gates, but uh, I think it's for the better. It, may, it made this uh, fight look more epic overall, I think. Hundreds of space marines have died, thousands of wounded. Being restored by apothecaries now, after the war. The enemy is killing a bit over 1000 each. Not so much compared to our score. I think we did a great job overall, defending and not giving up, that was huge. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed uh, this video, let me know what do you think in uh, the commentary, leave your feedback below the video or uh, in the chat, I'm not sure yet if, I, if this will be a premiere or not, I will see if YouTube uh, allows such long videos being premiered so for the start there might be only live chat but afterwards you can also leave uh, the feedback in the comments below the video or uh, if you watch it in the recording your feedback is most welcomed i might continue with uh, the series of video in this manner if you enjoyed it please let me know Leave your likes, dislikes, if you enjoyed the content, subscribe, hit uh, that bell button and you will get notified when I go live or uh, when I upload a video. For now, that's it from me. I will see you guys on the next stream. Bye-bye.